Hi everyone, welcome to the latest Focus Friday video. I'm Dutch Reefer and today the subject is keeping your sand clean. It's a question I get asked quite a lot by people in the comments. Is how do you keep your sand white? Because one of the worst things that could happen is when you have a, a reef tank running nice and fine and then suddenly uh, your sand will get uh, algae on it, especially red slime algae, cyano algae. It's very common uh, that this happens. And uh, so, yeah, of course, you want to prevent that. And uh, some, with some people, it gets so bad that they even remove their sand altogether. So they have a bare bottom tank. Personally, I think having a bare bottom tank is uh, it's not my style, but I can understand if you do because it will save you from quite a lot of trouble because if you don't keep your sand proper then it can also uh, build up a lot of uh, nitrates and phosphates that you don't want in your tank. So actually running a bare bottom tank is, is one of the safest ways to run a reef tank. But of course, and that's my opinion, uh, it, it looks best if there's sand on the bottom because then it looks yeah, it just looks very clean and nice. Um, so yeah, there are def different methods of keeping your sand clean. I'm going to go through them, uh, at least some of them, and then of course I'll show you how I'm keeping it clean. Uh, some people might already know, and if you look closely you can already see my method, uh, but I'll zoom in on that later. Um, so yeah, what you can do is, um, oh, one of, actually let's start off with one of the most important things for keeping your sand clean and that's having good flow in your tank. Um, having dead spots in your tank, so that's places where there's not a lot of flow or not no flow at all, those are very prone to getting uh, cyano red slime algae um, because when there's no flow bacteria start building up and then you end up with bacteria with uh, with algae if you're uh, if you're unlucky um, also maintaining your uh, reef parameters stable overall will definitely help in uh, in keeping it clean um, one thing you can do and i know that a lot of people are doing that is uh, just removing the sand altogether once in a while uh, cleaning it in, uh, in in salt water or even in ro water and then adding it back to the tank. That's a very thorough way of cleaning your sand. The, the one of the downsides is that you're also removing all the life that's in your sand. And yeah, there's quite a lot of small snails and worms and everything living in your sand. Um, so it's a very, uh, yeah, it's a very, very um, effective way, but also killing a lot of uh, good things in your tank. Another way is to uh, just stir the sand yourself. So every once in a while, just go through it with your hands and just stir it up. So all the uh, so it, there's the more oxygen gets added to the sand, uh, um, and you remove some of the, the built built up nitrates and phosphates that are in there. You will of course release them into your water column if you do this. So uh, be careful not to do your entire tank all together at once because that might create spikes, cause spikes in your uh, your water values, your water parameters. Um, and so of course you, you, you can do this in multiple uh, parts so just uh, divide your tank into three parts and do one part one week and then the next week do the middle and then the next week do the right something like that that's one of the uh, one of the options another option which uh, I'm also using is uh, adding creatures that uh, that keep your sand moving uh, the most obvious ones are sand sifting sea stars, sand sifting uh, starfish. I mean, um, and there's also snails. Some snails, I forgot the name, but they also live in the sand. They bury through your sand. They, they, uh, and yeah, they essentially keep your sand moving, uh, and it's also uh, working fine. You just need a lot of them. I have two sand sifting starfish myself. I've yeah, they've been in there for, well, I think close to two years now. Um, they migrated from my old tank with, where they also were for one and a half year. So they can get quite old. Uh, I'm surprised they still, they're still alive. They don't grow a lot, but yeah, you can see them moving through the sand. And I'll zoom into my tank right now. First, let's start off with the starfish that I just mentioned. I have two. There's one buried right here. 
and there's one right here oh, behind this fish and then that's also exactly the fish that I wanted to show you because this fish is what keeps my sand clean um, it's a it's a Valenciana sex putata that's the official name uh, I'll also post it in the video description so you can look it up yourself when I bought it, it was about half this size, uh, but yeah, it has grown quite a lot, and uh, as you can see, it's quite fat overall. It's a bit shy there, but as you can see, this fish is just taking mouthfuls of sand and then filtering it through his mouth, as you can see, and using his gills to spit out the sand. So what this fish does essentially is just move through the entire tank and just yeah just gobble up sand all day. So it's kind of his daytime job. It's what he does all day, and uh, he's quite good at it, as you can see. So let's take a look around the tank. As you can see, um, my sand is pretty clean and that's all to this little fellow what's also fun to see is because he's biting he's taking bites of sand there's often one of the uh, the, the rustes is swimming close to it either the blue one or the red one there are blue star leopard, leopard ones and they often just swim behind the fish just to see if he gobbles up some nice little sand critters for them to eat so I'll just quickly go around my tank showing you the sand. And as you can see right here is his lair. One of the, uh, I wouldn't call it a downside, but one of the things to keep in mind when buying one of these fish or any fish that will, will filter your sand is that they tend to create a, a lair for themselves where they sleep at night and where they run off to if they are scared. And mine's back there. Uh, when I just bought it, it used to gobble up a lot of sand and just throw it there in the corner. But for now it has decided that it doesn't need all the sand. It just settles with the sand it has right now and just, well, it takes a bite now and then, but overall he just keeps it this way. As you can see, the sand is clean up until almost the bottom. You can see little pieces of, uh, of algae are, that are on the bottom there. Uh, I don't mind. It's uh, for me, it's a sign that it's uh, it's doing okay. Be careful when you're having very thick layer of sand, because the thicker layer of sand you have, the more movement it will need. And uh, well, they will dig. These fish will dig up your sand, but they won't. They won't dig into like five centimeters of it. So um, yeah, just. Don't uh, don't overdo it on the sand. It's nice to have a, a, your whole bottom covered, but there doesn't need to be eight or ten centimeters of sand. That's the, not necessary. As you can see, most of my sand is right here. This is also the part where has the most algae. Ah. And that's what this is also where the least flow in the tank is because. As I mentioned earlier, it's important to have a lot of flow in your tank, or at least don't have dead spots. Um, so my reef, I've built my reef in a way that all the current from this uh, gyre is going all the way through the tank and is also able to move all along the reef structure. Uh, so there are no dead spots where there's no water movement at all. I think that's, that's one of the, the, the most important things to keep in mind. So I hope you uh, you learned something today. I hope you uh, you're able to keep your uh, your bottom clean, your your tank bottom, um, and good luck with that. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.